Hi everyone. Uh, this is on the series of lectures on operational amplifiers. We discussed how to realize inverting and non-inverting integrators. But in this lecture, I'll take you through some practical problems in those integrator circuits and differentiator circuits. And how does one commonly tackle them uh, by doing some very simple passive fixes. So what I mean by passive is just using resistors and capacitors, we try to address those problems. First, if you look at an integrator circuit here, shown here, this is an inverting integrator. We said that for the conditions to apply, meaning V plus to be exactly equal to V minus, for this condition to apply, for the inverting and the non-inverting terminals to track each other, you need to have negative feedback in the circuit. But if you look at this circuit here, at DC, the capacitor is an open circuit. So there is no negative feedback and therefore we cannot apply this condition. So that's one problem with an integrator circuit is that it doesn't have a DC negative feedback. So generally an integrator will be used in a, in a, generally in a, in a bigger feedback system, generally, uh, whether it's a PLL or a Sigma Delta, in some very specific cases, uh, the overall feedback, the global feedback loop will dictate, will create some kind of a feedback and you don't have to worry about this condition. But on its own, if you are going to use it, it's always better to ensure that there is also a DC feedback. So to have a DC feedback, all you need to do is just introduce a resistor RF as shown here. If you see here the feedback network from this node, from the output node to the feedback node, here it's the inverting terminal, it's actually a high pass filter. It's actually a, a high pass filter. So the feedback is initially zero. I'm showing this on a linear scale, on a decibel scale, it will go to minus infinity. And after one by RC, the feedback gain, uh, the feedback is going to be one or zero decibels. Now by introducing a resistor here, we have introduced a feedback even at DC as well. And the feedback quantity will be R by R plus RF, RF. So we have introduced a DC feedback as well. So this is to ensure that there is a DC feedback and we don't have this condition of um, having no feedback at DC. Now, what difference does it make? If I introduce a resistor RF, what difference does it make to a conventional integrator characteristic? A conventional integrator uh, characteristic looks at the frequency response or the Bode plot of a conventional uh, integrator with a pole at DC looks like this. The shown in LO, that's how the graph looks like. The frequency at which it, it touches the zero decibels is when one by SRC becomes equal to one and that happens to be one by RC. Now what have we done is that by introducing a resistor RF, we are actually changing, of course we have introduced a feedback now, but we have changed the DC gain. Now the DC gain at DC, the capacitance is an open circuit. So the DC gain, um, it's actually minus of RF by R. If you take the magnitude of this, it's going to be RF by R. Again, this is something I've already discussed in much greater detail on a course in passive circuits. That is, whenever you have a resistor and capacitor in series, after the frequency one by RC in this circuit, the circuit will behave like a resistor. I mean, when you have two elements in series, the one with the largest impedance will dictate the overall impedance. Therefore, after this frequency one by RC, so that's the point where these two impedances become equal, this circuit capacitive impedance will decrease and resistor it's going to look like a resistor. Similarly, if I have a resistor and capacitor in parallel, at DC it's going to look like a resistor because in, when you put two elements in parallel, the lower impedance will dictate the overall impedance. The lower of the two impedances will dictate the overall impedance. And the resistor impedance is always constant, but capacitive impedance keep decreasing. And the point where they both cross over is one by RC. This is as a function of frequency. So after one by RC, it's going to behave like a capacitor. So initially, if you see this parallel RC circuit here is going to just behave like a capacitor, sorry, as a resistor. 
of value RF. So this amplifier, it's ideally for an integrator, the DC gain should be infinity. But this one, it's going to give me a finite DC gain of value RF by R. Now, until this frequency 1 by RF into C, this network is going to behave like a resistor. After that, it will transition to a capacitor. At that point, at that point, it will start behaving like, behaving like an integrator. So after the frequency 1 by RFC, when this network transitions to a capacitor, the network is going, the impedance is going to behave like a capacitance. From that point onwards, the whole circuit, the inverting amplifier will behave like an inverting integrator. So that's what I've shown in this graph. At Until this frequency 1 by RFC, since this, this is the region where the resistive impedance dominates, so therefore the inverting integrator will behave like an inverting amplifier with a gain of 20 log RF by R. After that, after this frequency 1 by RFC, uh, the, the, the graph on the pink is indistinguishable from the graph in yellow, so it, it's going to behave like an ideal integrator. So typically, you will choose RF as high as possible, so that you will normally see what is the range of frequencies in which you want this integrator to behave as an integrator. So then you will ensure that this RFC comes before that frequency. So if this is your range of frequencies where you want this integrator to behave as an integrator, you will choose your RF accordingly. So generally, if in case if you introduce a resistor RF in an integrating circuit, if let's say you are using it in a PLL or some other applications, um, you will normally have a condition uh, or for example in a sigma delta ADC you will normally have a condition called uh, in-band noise rejection. So this RF gets dictated by that because you are, you are deciding ideally the in-band noise uh, rejection which depends upon which is actually 1 by the integrator gain. We want that to be 0. Um, so because now the integrator gain is finite the in-band noise rejection will no longer be a 0 or minus infinity, infinity decibels it's going to be finite. In those cases, RF has to be chosen carefully. Now next condition, uh, the next circuit I've shown here, this is just for the sake of completeness. I have taken uh, a non-integrating integrator, non-inverting integrator. And uh, then uh, in the same way, if you see, if you recall the previous lecture, the way in which we built a non-inverting integrator is that we took the same circuit R and C here input is now applied at the invert at the positive non-inverting terminal and we will get the transfer function we get is 1 plus src by src that is from this point to the output if i want to get rid of the numerator term uh, the, the the numerator polynomial i just need to multiply this with 1 by 1 plus src and that is accomplished by a simple low pass rc filter so we have already discussed this in the same way, if you see even in this circuit, there is DC negative feedback missing. The capacitor will behave like an open circuit. So the DC negative feedback is missing. So in case, what happens if DC negative feedback is missing, then you will no longer have that uh, the positive and negative terminals tracking each other. That condition will no longer hold true. So now if I introduce a resistance RF here, to get an exact transfer function of this type, 1 plus SRC, I should also introduce RF across this resistor, across this capacitance C. So you can very easily verify and see that you will get an inverting integrator, uh, an uh, inverting integrator with DC feedback. I mean, of course, the moment you put a resistor, you will also get a very similar kind of transfer function. Okay, a similar kind of transfer function at DC, if you see, the transfer, you, you can very quickly calculate the DC gain of the circuit. This part of it, the non-inverting amplifier will give me a DC gain of 1 plus RF by R, which is nothing but R plus RF by R. And the DC gain of this passive RC circuit is simply RF by RF plus R. So you will end up getting a gain of RF by R. Okay, so you will get exactly the same gain as this circuit, the only difference is polarity it will be a non-inverting integrator. Now let me pose a simple question. What will be the current this op-amp has to supply? Let's, for, let's analyze it in this circuit. What current will have to come out of this op-amp? What will be the value of the current? 
so can you think of it what will be the current that this operational amplifier needs to supply so look at the circuit the current that is actually flowing in this direction is given by vi by r now remember this impedance network z i can just uh, if you look at the circuit what's actually happening is that you have a amplifier op amp and an entire impedance here i have just lumped these two together as an impedance so if i have a current i flowing here the same current has to flow here as well so now what will be the current this op amp has to supply vi by r right op amp also has to supply vi by r so this is a constraint that the op amp design has to take care of if your resistor i mean talk for the we haven't discussed noise of op amps yet but once we discuss noise especially in the op amp circuits uh, then we will see that this resistor noise will also affect the overall noise to lower the noise we have to choose a very uh, smaller value of the resistance r here remember you need a gain of rf by r that's it this doesn't tell you what absolute value of r and rf should be it just tells you the gain the absolute value of r is typically determined by the power if op amp is supposed to deliver a certain current then you will dict it's dictated by the power and also it's dictated by the noise specification okay these two will determine the value of r but i'm just trying to tell you that op amp has to supply all this current this entire current has to flow through this op amp okay so now in a similar way i'll finish the discussion on differentiator circuit as well so if you are if you are talking about a differentiating circuit we have a capacitor and a resistor here and this circuit if you see does it have a dc feedback does it have a dc feedback is there feedback present at dc it's a differentiator circuit yes right so there is a dc feedback capacitor is open circuit if capacitor is open circuit then there is a complete dc feedback from this node to this node but what about feedback at infinite frequencies what about at infinity at infinite frequencies is there any feedback in the circuit right the beta becomes zero because your capacitance will act like a short circuit so your output will so at very high frequencies you don't have feedback in the circuit okay so that's what is shown here so ideally you want a differentiator circuit to look like this its dc gain is zero s into r into c is the transfer function and and its dc gain is zero which means it should be minus infinity decibels but because of which what is happening here is that if you see here uh, in the circuit at infinite frequencies there is no feedback at all and you can't expect v plus i mean the, the positive and negative terminals to follow each other that will happen only if there is negative feedback but here the opposite happens in case of an integrators there is no feedback at dc and a very strong feedback at high frequencies but here if you see the characteristic the feedback network is simply transfer function is a simple rc circuit low pass rc so at infinity there is no feedback that's the problem here so to ensure that there is some residual feedback at infinity as well we just have to introduce a resistor rf in series with the capacitance at infinite frequency capacitance behave like a short circuit so you will be left with a simple resistor rf in series with it so at infinite frequencies you have a feedback of rf by r plus rf that's your feedback at infinite frequency there is a feedback is finite but now what's happening because of that is that okay there are two reasons why we introduce rf first one thing i directly told you is feedback i'll come to the second reason a little, little later in a few moments okay at high frequencies we want to ensure that there is sufficient feedback then the circuit will behave like a proper differentiator but what happens because of that is that at high frequencies when you we have put rf and c in series so after the frequency 1 by rf into c this circuit is going to behave like a resistor 
okay so then this amplifier will just look like an integrating inverter uh, integrating amplifier uh, sorry an inverting amplifier r and rf and the gain is going to be r by rf okay so the gain is simply the magnitude is going to be r by rf with a sign of with, with a negative sign so that's what i've shown here after 1 by rfc the circuit previously it was ideally supposed to be a differentiator but now the gain has become 1 by uh, the gain has become r by rf okay so now the way in which you choose the resistor rf is you will normally find out the frequencies or the range of frequencies in which you want the circuit to behave as a differentiator and then choose rf but there is a bigger problem with differentiator circuits which is amplification of noise of course it is differentiating your input signal but if you see if there is some noise present along with the input signal that is going to see an infinite gain at high frequencies even if your input signal is bounded meaning your input signal has a finite range of frequencies it it is i mean it it, it has energy only over a finite range of frequencies noise is generally a wide band signal noise can have infinite energy noise can have energy even at infinite frequencies so therefore that noise will be amplified by this differentiator circuit that's a much bigger problem which is not there in integrator circuits so this resistor rf also helps in reducing the high frequency gain of this uh, differentiator it helps the high frequency gain by limiting the gain here okay the high frequency gain is just r by rf now but still if you see noise is still present noise is going to see if you, this is your range of frequencies you want to differentiate you are unnecessarily amplifying noise or rather providing some gain to noise in this range of frequencies to avoid this we may have to do some kind of a low pass filtering to this noise at higher frequencies and that can be readily accomplished by putting a capacitor in parallel with this resistor r if i put a capacitor in parallel with the resistor r at very high frequencies this network will be, behave like a capacitor and at high frequencies this will behave like a resistor so it will look like an integrator characteristic at high frequencies so that's what it's shown here so after the frequency 1 by rcf of this feedback network it's going to behave like a capacitor so you will the, the gain will start rolling off okay so that's what is going to happen at low frequencies it's going to increase so you can readily see whenever you have a capacitor and resistor at low frequencies capacitor dominates here so the circuit is going to look like this it's a capacitor and a resistor are in feedback at low frequencies the transfer function is src at very high frequencies at infinite frequencies or very high frequencies this network is going to be a capacitance of value cf and this here is going to be a resistance r rf okay this one here is going to be a resistance of value rf so now what will be the transfer function at very high frequencies the transfer function is going to be 1 by rf cf s this is the high frequency transfer function okay it's going to look like an integrator so here it will be src here it will be 1 by s cf rf so this is how the integrator or the differentiator characteristic looks like generally we add these capacitors and this resistor to tailor the high frequency behavior okay so so that noise is not amplified or noise doesn't see a gain for wide range of frequencies but generally differentiator circuits are avoided in practice okay integrators are more commonly used circuits i have shown this graph with the assumption that uh, 1 by rfc 1 by rfc appears first okay yeah so yeah i think this should still be fine that's it um, yeah so that's it about a uh, differentiator and integrator circuits now we'll look at a few problems on how to solve op amp circuits intuitively